80 years ago, Americans built the world's tallest building in just 15 months. The Empire State Building, the largest and most beautiful office building in the world. 80 years ago, Americans built the world's tallest building in just 15 months. We know more about skyscraper construction than we did in the 1930s. You'd think that we could do this faster, not slower. But we can't, points out billionaire investor Peter Thiel. The opposite's happened. The Empire State Building was built in 15 months. The World Trade Center took about 13 years. This construction behind me still ain't done and won't be done maybe for another decade. Why 13 years? Partly because politicians were involved, but all skyscrapers take longer today because government's rules bog things down. In the 30s, some trains in America ran over 100 miles per hour. But now even the so-called high-speed Acela trains average under 90 miles per hour. One reason is that government safety rules insist that American trains be twice as heavy as trains in other countries. So while trains get slower, it's fortunate that some newer businesses were able to thrive outside government control. From the moment you turn on your phone, you see what friends are sharing. Because sleepy regulators didn't know enough to regulate them. You may have heard of Peter Thiel because he was one of the first investors in Facebook. Here's how he's portrayed in the movie Social Network. We took a look at everything and congratulations. We're gonna start you off with a $500,000 investment. That $500,000 got Facebook off the ground. Uh, that part is accurate. Yes, we wrote the check an hour after they showed up so that they wouldn't, uh, you know, they wouldn't get it for someone else. The TV show Silicon Valley portrays Teal as a chubby, awkward geek who wants investors to give a 30-second sales pitch. Go ahead and pitch. You have until I fasten the seat belt in my car. 30 seconds is normally not enough. To, to, really, uh, to really evaluate one of these businesses. His new book covers his startup successes, like PayPal. Making it possible to send money to each other via the internet. It had this explosive growth. Within six months, there were over a million people using the service. It was like this crazy rocket that just took off. Profit from PayPal allowed Teal to fund other companies that have changed our lives. Spotify lets us listen to most any song, any time. A shared transit system that comes to you. Ride-sharing services match people who need rides with people who'd like to make some money driving people. LinkedIn. Teal also funded other popular and useful websites. You can start a software company with two or three software engineers and maybe $120,000. But other industries are less innovative because government planners are all over them. To get a new drug to market costs on average a billion dollars because there's so much of a regulatory burden on, on the drug companies. So Teal now hopes to make money back in companies like this one that use technology to help businesses comply with insurance rules. You run the business, they read the rules. It really did take us to read, I would say, tens of thousands of pages of material. This Teal-backed startup hopes to reduce drug development costs by allowing innovators to run science experiments from their home computers. Three scientists with laptops in a garage could get together and could have an idea for a cure for cancer. But until that works, medical progress will be slow, says Teal, because of government's endless obstacles. You would not be able to get a polio vaccine approved today. Polio killed and paralyzed millions. Polio epidemics, which once swept through whole communities. When I was born, some people were afraid to go to public swimming pools for fear of catching polio. Dr. Jonas Salk, he developed the first vaccine. To but the first batch of his vaccines gave polio to 40,000 people. If that would happen today, the whole thing would be shut down for 20 years. Because today's regulators sure don't want to approve a drug that hurts someone. The agency has pulled the plug on the popular drug Avastin. While all of us can see the person who dies if a drug is dangerous, the regulators never get blamed for lives lost that could have been saved had the drug been approved earlier. It's always hard to uh, see because we don't see the future that hasn't happened. We should be thankful that there was less central planning when Salk tried his vaccine and the charity spontaneously backed him. A healthier American youth has been the reward of a people's generosity. That wouldn't happen today, says Teal. If the FDA was regulating the video game companies, you couldn't design a new video game. 
The government might demand double-blind studies proving games aren't harmful. If the FDA ever got its hands on video games, we would have none left. Today, Google and Amazon want to test a new idea, delivery drones. But in the U.S., such testing is forbidden without government permission. And government rarely gives that permission. So Amazon and Google do their drone testing overseas, where a little more spontaneity is allowed. On a remote farm in Australia, the world's first delivery by a Google drone. America misses out on cool things because today America has so many rules that innovators spend less time innovating, more time trying to manipulate Washington. Internet companies now spend more on lobbying Washington than Wall Street, Hollywood, and defense contractors. Once you have these sort of politician CEOs take over, they often have to spend far more time appeasing regulators than thinking about uh, what their business should be doing. Fortunately, internet entrepreneurs started innovating before the planners noticed. Silicon Valley is 1,500 square miles of the most fertile innovation ground on Earth. A place where people said, no government plan, no problem. I don't think it's an accident that, that the booming internet happened in the two metropolitan areas farthest from Washington. Seattle and Silicon Valley were lucky to be as far away as they were. You have a society in which people can create and invent and trade and build and grow and develop new products. It's an amazing thing.